Welcome to History Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Emmanuel Leroy Lagerie, who looked at history from the bottom up, dies at 94. Filmmaker Donald Shebib created classic Canadian road trip movie. Willie Hernandez, relief pitcher who had a banner 1984, dies at 69. Podcast, French Rooster Revival, Thrifting, Reporter Albert Londres. Problem staff can ruin a workplace. Why is it getting harder to fire them? Emmanuel Leroy Lagery, who looked at history from the bottom up, dies at 94. New York Times. Emmanuel Leroy Lagery, a French historian and leading member of the Annals Movement, has died at the age of 94. Leroy Lagery was known for his work on French history, with books such as Montella, The Promised Land of Error and Carnival in Romans becoming bestsellers. His work was part of the Annals School of History, which sought to understand the past from a bottom-up perspective, focusing on the beliefs and psychology of anonymous individuals rather than the actions of generals and rulers. Leroy Lagerie's work led to the discipline of history being enriched by new tools, new approaches, and new subjects, according to French President Emmanuel Macron. The Annals School's influence extended beyond France, with its ideas felt in histories across Western Europe and the United States. Filmmaker Donald Shebib created classic Canadian road trip movie. The Globe and Mail. Canadian filmmaker Donald Shebib has died at the age of 85. Shebib directed, produced and co-wrote the 1970 film Going Down the Road, which tells the story of two friends from Nova Scotia who drive to Toronto in search of work. The film was well-received and is considered to be one of the best Canadian movies ever made. Shebib's career started in documentary filmmaking, and he carried this approach over into his narrative features. He was known for his realistic style, and his ability to blend actors seamlessly into their surroundings. He also directed episodes of a number of TV shows, including Danger Bay and Wind at My Back. Shebib was born in Toronto in 1938, and studied sociology at the University of Toronto before attending film school at UCLA in the U.S. Willie Hernandez, relief pitcher who had a banner 1984, dies at 69. New York Times. Willie Hernandez, who won the American League's Most Valuable Player Award in 1984 when his brilliant relief pitching helped propel the Detroit Tigers to a World Series championship, died on Monday in Sebring, Florida. He was 69. His death was announced by the Tigers. His wife, Dulce Carrasco, told the Puerto Rican newspaper Primera Hora that he had experienced heart problems for many years. Podcast, French Rooster Revival, Thrifting, Reporter Albert Londres. RFI. The Gallic rooster, a symbol of French identity, is being preserved and promoted by Damien Vidart through the Conservatoire du Coq Galois. The breed of chicken, La Galoise Dorée, has been abandoned in favor of more productive breeds, but Vidart believes it is an important part of French heritage. The second-hand market in France is booming, with platforms like Vint making it easier to buy and sell used clothes. However, this has impacted traditional charity shops like Emmaus, which use the income for back-to-work schemes. The appeal of sustainable consumption is discussed, as well as the downside of making money through the second-hand market. The podcast also highlights Albert Londres, considered one of the founders of investigative journalism in France, who continues to inspire journalists today. Problem staff can ruin a workplace. Why is it getting harder to fire them? The Sydney Morning Herald. Proposed amendments to Australia's workplace legislation could make it more difficult for employers to dismiss problem employees, according to Paulo Halloran, a partner and head of office at Denton's Lawyers Australia. The changes to the Fair Work Act 2009 would introduce new workplace rights for employees, independent contractors, and unions, aimed at reducing insecure forms of work and enhancing job security. However, O'Halloran argues that the amendments fail to address the issue of vexatious or meritless unfair dismissal and adverse action claims lodged by employees who have been legitimately dismissed for bad behavior. O'Halloran believes that bullying, sexual harassment, disobedience, negativity, and disputation are reaching record highs in Australian workplaces, and employers need the ability to dismiss problem employees who engage in such behaviors. He argues that while employee protections are important, it is equally important to protect employers and stakeholders from badly behaving employees. O'Halloran suggests that employers may be forced to outsource the management of these issues to specialist lawyers if the proposed changes are passed. A final gift of brilliance from the late Hilary Mantle. The Sydney Morning Herald. Hilary Mantle's posthumous book, A Memoir of My Former Self, is a collection of essays, lectures, and book and film reviews that accumulates into a sort of memoir. The book covers a wide range of topics, from personal essays to historical figures such as Anne Bullen and Princess Diana, as well as literary figures such as Jane Austen and V.S. Naipaul. 
Mantle's writing is praised for its astute observations, generosity, and openness, as well as its ability to empower and engage readers. Overall, the book is seen as a gift to readers from the late author. OpenAI has just fused its corporate kill switch. Financial Times OpenAI's recent governance turmoil highlights the challenges of overseeing the safe development of AI within a for-profit commercial business. The board, which was tasked with ensuring AI benefits humanity, fired CEO Sam Altman for misleading them, only to reinstate him days later following protests. While some argue that a traditional fiduciary board would be better suited to the role, others believe it is important to hold AI companies accountable for the potential risks of their technology. The tensions between commercial drive and concerns about collateral damage must be addressed to ensure safe AI development. Cameroon receives first shipment of breakthrough malaria vaccine. RFI. Cameroon has received a shipment of 331,200 doses of the malaria vaccine, making it the third African country to introduce the vaccine after Ghana and Malawi. Malaria is one of Africa's deadliest diseases, killing nearly half a million children under the age of five each year. The vaccine, known as RTSS and manufactured by British drugmaker GSK, has been shown to reduce severe malaria illness and hospitalizations in previous trials. Inoculations in Cameroon will begin in December or early next year. A further 1.7 million doses of the vaccine are expected to arrive in Burkina Faso, Liberia, Niger, and Sierra Leone in the coming weeks. The World Health Organization, WHO, has called the vaccine rollout a breakthrough moment for malaria vaccines and malaria control. First Financial donates iconic tapestry to Terre Haute History Center. Yahoo! A tapestry, commissioned by First Financial Bank in 1988 to provide a unique perspective on local history, has been moved to Vigo County History Center in Indiana. The piece, created over six months, is made from hand-tufted, 100% virgin wool and depicts a range of local landmarks. One of the only places that can claim to host the first Thanksgiving rejects the label. Yahoo! Maine, Virginia, Texas, and Florida all claim to have hosted the first Thanksgiving in the U.S. The main claim is based on an account of a 1607 feast between English colonists and Wabanaki natives. However, locals do not want to promote the event because of the suffering it caused to native peoples. The colonists kidnapped two Wabanaki men who were forced to act as translators and guides and left their wives behind for years. Later the colonists offered a cash bounty on the scalps of Penobscot people. Native people have long suffered from the celebration of colonialism, and protests by tribes forced the cancellation of a bicentennial event in the state two years ago. Present-day Maine is in a political fight over tribal sovereignty, and the governor vetoed a bill that would have given Penobscot people the rights and benefits of other federally recognized tribes. That's all for today's news. We started off with the passing of Emmanuel Leroy Lagerie, a French historian known for his bottom-up perspective on history. He enriched the discipline of history with his work, and his influence extended beyond France. Next, we learned about the death of Canadian filmmaker Donald Shebib, who created the classic road trip movie, Going Down the Road. His realistic style and ability to blend actors seamlessly into their surroundings made him one of the best Canadian directors. Then, we heard about the passing of Willie Hernandez, the relief pitcher who played a crucial role in the Detroit Tigers' 1984 World Series championship. His brilliant pitching earned him the American League's Most Valuable Player Award that year. Moving on, we discussed the preservation of the Gallic rooster, a symbol of French identity, by Damien Vidart. He believes that the breed of chicken, La Galoise Doré, is an important part of French heritage. We also explored the booming second-hand market in France and the impact it has on traditional charity shops. In Australia, proposed amendments to workplace legislation could make it more difficult for employers to dismiss problem employees. According to Paulo Halloran, a partner at Denton's Lawyers Australia, employers need the ability to dismiss employees who engage in bad behavior. He argues that while employee protections are important, it is equally important to protect employers and stakeholders. We then discussed Hilary Mantle's posthumous book, A Memoir of My Former Self, which covers a wide range of topics and is seen as a gift to readers from the late author. Mantle's writing is praised for its astute observations and ability to engage readers. In the tech world, OpenAI has faced governance turmoil, highlighting the challenges of overseeing the safe development of AI within a for-profit commercial business. The tensions between commercial drive and concerns about collateral damage must be addressed to ensure safe AI development. Moving to Africa, Cameroon has received a shipment of the malaria vaccine, making it the third African country to introduce the vaccine. Malaria is a deadly disease in Africa, and the vaccine rollout is seen as a breakthrough moment for malaria control. 
In Indiana, a tapestry commissioned by First Financial Bank in 1988 has been donated to the Terre Haute History Center. The tapestry provides a unique perspective on local history and depicts a range of local landmarks. Lastly, we learned about the controversy surrounding the claim of hosting the first Thanksgiving in the U.S. Maine, Virginia, Texas, and Florida all have competing claims, but locals in Maine do not want to promote the event due to the suffering it caused to native peoples. That's it for today's news. Remember, history is made up of both big events and the stories of everyday people. Keep an open mind and dig deeper to uncover the fascinating tales behind the headlines. And as always, feel free to share your thoughts and questions. What are your thoughts on these news stories? Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6Do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6Do brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6Do brief via email.